Um, I'm a few minutes earlier than I usually get on, so we'll give everybody a second to see who shows up. So while we're waiting, my name is Laurel Houston. I am the Divine Feminine Enchantress. I am the creator of Body Mapping and the founder of Reflections Inside and Out, where we hope to help you learn how to love who you are inside and out. And I'm super excited because um, I actually haven't talked about this in quite a while, but I'm on kind of a rampage with my house right now. <laughs> so I thought this is perfect because I'm literally going through this and I want to share it with the women in my group and see if it rings true for any of them um, and maybe who it will help. So what I want to talk about is the different rooms in your home and what they tell you about your emotional state and more importantly, what to do about it. Now, I cannot go through every single room and every single person's home, so I just kind of picked a couple of general rooms. But the first thing that I want to speak into is just the overall state of your home. So when I talk about home, if you are someone who lives, uh, like maybe you're in college and so you live in a dorm and you only have your dorm room, versus you are a homeowner and you have your own house and you have your own property versus you live in a town home and or you know you're in um so you have your own space in a town home but you've got people connected on each sides versus you're in a multi-level and you live in an apartment so regardless of what you classify your home as um Take into consideration, hi Allison, um, take into consideration what you have control over. So like if you're in an apartment and you don't get to decide um, like the paint colors of your door or you don't get to decide what um, the stairwell looks like, what part do you have control over? So maybe you are watching this and you're someone who still lives at home and it's your parents' home. Maybe you're house sitting for them or maybe you're just in a scenario because the world is crazy right now that you had to move back in with your parents. Um, so how much can you change versus how much is just that's, it is what it is. Uh, so what I mean by that, um, we live in a neighborhood that does not have any um, covenants or HOA restrictions, but you have, but my parents <clears throat> live in one where they like regulate everything. They even tell you what kind of plants you can plant outside. So that's what I mean by um, what do you have power to change and what are you kind of stuck with? <laughs> now, as I say this, I invite you to be very honest with yourself about this. Because even as a college student living in student housing, I had a doorway and I had a little landing and I could put out a welcome mat. I could hang a wreath from my door to make it more welcoming. So this isn't a time to go into blame. This is a time to take an honest evaluation of what parts of my home and my property do I have stewardship over? Do I have control over? Do I manage versus what really is out of my control? I'm not allowed to paint my door. Okay. And this is why. Um, I'm going to start with the entrance to the home just because that's how you get in. So when you look at the front door, the front door to your home, start on the outside. Is it where you have a pile of dirty diapers because to take the extra 10 steps to take the diapers to the garbage is just too much because you're a brand new mom and you're like, I don't care. There's a pile of poopy diapers out my front door. I don't care. When I walk out to the garage, I will take them to the garage. Versus you have like a wreath on your door and your porch is swept. Maybe there's a welcome mat versus your outside, your porch area, is more decorated than maybe the inside of your home. The porch area, your front door, the entrance to your home that guests would take. Because I, I recognize that for some of you, you don't enter through your front door, you go in through the garage, right? So your front door where guests, strangers, acquaintances, where they enter, um, the more inviting you have made it, the more you are in a state, an emotional state, a mental state, 
that you are welcoming people into your life. Not necessarily into your home, but into your life. So if you own a business, yes, it's important that your business is welcoming, but how welcoming is your home? Because if the front door to your home is barricaded and blocked and no one uses it, that's because your energy says, I don't want anyone to come in. Um, so look at your front entrance and is it pretty neutral, like it's bare, it's clean, it's clean, but you're not really an outdoor decorator, great, that would be neutral. Is it barricaded? Do people have to step over or overcome an obstacle to get to your front door? That is you signaling to the universe, to your neighbors, to the world, to your family to say, don't come in, we don't want you here. If your uh, door has, you know, a welcome mat and maybe like a wreath on the door, any additional adornment that you would do to your front door is you inviting people, resources, and money into your space. So this is why I'm starting with the door. Because I often talk about feminine energy and um, that the feminine energy is the pull energy. It's the invite energy. It's what allows women to bring people, resources, and money to them with ease, with flow. So um, a lot of times women ask me, well, how do I know what I am? Like, how do I know? And your home is a really big indicator of this. Is everything in your home utilitarian? Meaning it has a purpose. <laughs> um, and the purpose is more than just it's nice to look at. The purpose is like it's functional and it has a reason for being here, otherwise I've gotten rid of it. Because if as you look around your home, the majority of the things in your home are utilitarian, meaning um, I have this, but the only reason I have this is because I use it on a regular and consistent basis, that is also how the relationships in your life are. You only maintain relationships that serve a purpose. So they would be transactional relationships rather than connective relationships. And what I mean by transactional relationships, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is a, a transfer of money, but you get something out of the relationship and they get something out of the relationship. There is an exchange that occurs. And that exchange doesn't necessarily build connection. It's just quid pro quo. I give, you give, I give, you give, I give, you give. Um, <clears throat> because that's what your home is versus if things, um, especially in your front entryway, and you don't have to actually do business from your home for this to affect your business. So yes, your business needs to be very inviting in the front entrance, but the place that you reside, your space of safety and comfort, what does the door to that look like? Okay, so there's that. Oh, for those of you that are single, and you are trying to draw new relationships into your life, whether those are friendships or intimacy or a random makeout partner for the night. You, the entrance to your home, whether you bring them to your home or not, the way that that entrance into your home is a signal to your energy. It's a, a kind of a flashing light to you that says, this is whether or not you're welcoming and inviting other people, that energy that you have around you. So for example, my entrance gets swept regularly. It's very clean, it's very neat, it's very organized because order helps people feel safe. Um, it's not overly decorated because I do like simplicity, but I always, regardless of the season, there is a wreath on my door. So right now there is a, a red, white, and blue wreath that says um, welcome. And so there's always something that makes it look a little pretty and says welcome. My, my door always says welcome. Um, so that is something that my energy um, wants to portray that things are organized, that they are clean, they're neat, they're tidy, they're safe, and they're welcoming. And um, <clears throat> when people meet me, that's usually what they say is, I just felt so welcomed by you. And I'm like, oh good. So when my entrance gets cluttered, and here would be an example of this. 
Amazon comes and delivers a whole bunch of stuff, stuff on your doorstep. That's something you didn't have control over. That's what Amazon does, okay? How long did they stay there? Once you received them, do they stay in your entryway, blocking the door or making it inconvenient for people to come and go? Or did you receive the package, you brought it in, you unpacked it, you put the boxes in recycle, you actually received what was delivered to you? Unpack your boxes, ladies, because that's something you purposefully ordered and asked and received. So if you are trying to manifest things and things are being delivered to you in the physical form, and you're letting them sit for a while, or you open the box, but you don't empty the box, you don't separate the garbage from the item that you actually ordered, um, it is actually halting, stalling your ability to receive and manifest. So just be aware that your front entrance and receiving things through that door, people, resources, and money, um, how you treat those physical items that come to your home, how you treat those people is a signal and a sign to the universe as to your readiness of receiving other people, resources, and money to your energy. Is that cool or what? So now, before I get accused of um, telling you guys to go spend a lot of money, that's not actually what I'm saying. How hard is it to sweep off your front porch? How hard is it to find a decoration that you probably already own and put it out there? It doesn't have to be a wreath. If wreaths aren't your style, great, don't put a wreath out there. Put a plant out there. Put, but do something um, that makes it noticeable and more inviting to those who would see it. Even if they don't ever approach your door. Have you guys ever been driving somewhere and you see someone's front porch and you go, oh, that's so cute. You noticed it and if you had the time and courage to go to that person's home, you would pick their porch over a porch that had a, a fence either to keep a kid or an animal in um, that's covered in garbage that has overgrowth from trees, like everything about that says, I don't want you here. Or we're hiding, stay away. So look at the entrance that other people use. Okay, the next entrance would be the, the family entrance. Where do you and your kids, your spouse, your roommates, if it is a different door, say you pull into the garage and you enter through the mudroom, um, I'm going to clean up my every weight today and unpack that box that's been there for a week. Oh my gosh, Holly, yes. Unpack that because that is literally, you. the universe is like, we gave you exactly what you asked for and you still won't receive it. It is definitely affecting your money and your relationships, just so you know. Okay, so when you have another entrance that you come through um, and it is more of an intimate, it's the people who live in the house or it's the neighbor kid that's, practically part of the family. Um, people don't usually knock on this door. Uh, that entrance um, is an indicator of your rela your intimate relationships. And when I say intimate, I'm not just talking about sexual intimacy. I'm talking about the relationships that you let into your inner circle. Because these doors are usually doors that come into the family or more private part of the home. Um, and so what does this entrance look like? Um, if you enter, if you go from the garage into a laundry room, are there piles that make it hard for your family to navigate to get to you? Because a lot of times if there is the garage and some kind of a utility room that, you, that people have to go through to get into the heart of the home, if that area is kept dirty, by one particular person that it's no longer age appropriate. <laughs> so like if your four year old is con four year old is constantly leaving his shoes in the doorway, he's four. If your 40 year old husband is leaving stuff 
in the doorway that's making it hard for people to get in, that is an indicator that he's emotionally hiding. And I use that word, but that does not mean that he is betraying you and untrustworthy. It means that he doesn't feel like he can let people into his inner circle emotionally. So um, you could have little kids that are really good about putting their shoes away, and then as a teenager, all of a sudden they stop. This is them saying, I, I'm i putting up barriers because I don't want to let people in. I don't trust the people that I let in. So if you live alone and this particular part of your home is always trashed, this is why your relationships are really struggling because you that place in your home that the intimate people in your environment walk through and they have all these obstacles to overcome just to get into your home, ask yourself what emotional or mental obstacles am I requiring people to go through to get to me? Because there are some or you wouldn't have piles in those locations. So you're saying I should be better and keeping the big spiders off my porch. <laughs> Well, so with that, Kayla, that's actually really interesting. Um, spiders are a spirit totem. And spiders are actually, they usually show up because spiders don't like to be seen. Spiders hate humans. <laughs> so if a spider actually makes itself known to you, um, the spider is trying to tell you that it's time to look into your hidden self, your shadow self. And your shadow self is not the dark parts of you. The shadow self is just the parts of you that you keep hidden because you don't necessarily want people to see them. So um, there are, if you clean that area up and you have a whole bunch of spiders that run away versus you reveal them and they pause for a minute and then run away, they're reminding you that, hey, as you clean up and as you let this area get cleaned, you will find parts of you that you've kept hidden. That's that's what they're telling you. That's why they're showing up. Because I live in St. George and we have scorpions and we have spiders and we have all sorts of uck and um, multi-legged things that hang out around here. And I hardly ever see spiders because there's very few parts of me that I hide, especially from those in my intimate circle. So if you um, don't want spiders to come around, be willing to be more vulnerable. <laughs> Probably not what some of you wanted to hear, but there you go. Okay, so the entrances to your home are, are the literal indicators to others and to those around you of how much they're going to have to go through to get to you um, and what kind of journey it will be as they try to get to you. So are they going to have to overcome huge obstacles? They're walking through piles of stuff to get to you. Is it inviting, but it was decorated by someone else? How many of you have a craft that someone else gave you that you're like, well, I would like this on my door. It doesn't, it's not really me, but you know, we'll, we'll put it up anyway. And um, so what part of you are you showing up as someone else? Because that's how you think you should appear. Um, because the, one of the questions I get a lot with this is, well, I'm not really a crafty person, so how do I decorate my front porch if I don't really like a lot of stuff? Well, you can have a clean front porch that all it has is a rug and if that fits your energy, you don't want a wreath, you don't want a picture, you don't want a topiary, you don't, fine. Then at night, just leave your porch light on. Um, during the day, make sure it's swept off. That you are easy to get, that it's, it's easy to get in. There's no fluff, there's no extra. This is just, you're getting the bare bones of me and you better be okay with that. That's honest that there's nothing wrong with that okay let's see do I see okay I'm checking my time so then the other um, place that I wanted to talk about um, I have feeling I'm gonna have I'm gonna do this again next week there are just too many places and I'm not talking fast enough so the next place I want to talk about is the mat your bathroom the bathroom that you use to get ready in the morning. 
Um, and this is a lot like the front door type thing that um, when you look at the bathroom that you use versus your guest bathroom. So I'm actually going to start with the guest bathroom. If you have an extra bathroom and your guests use it, um, and if you were to look at that bathroom and it just had basics, so there's soap and there's the hand towel, there's toilet paper. If it has a shower in it, it has like a dollar store curtain on it and um, the towel you had in college. <laughs> you, uh, this is you saying, I don't, okay, how do I want to put this? The less effort you put into your guests bathroom, the more you require others to prove themselves to you. I know, stick with me for a second. Because the bathroom is where we groom. This is about our appearance. And so the guest bathroom, if you don't provide anything for your guests, like in my guest bathroom, it has some of our nicest towels. There's a blow dryer in there. There's a flat iron in there. There's an entire drawer with hair bands and a clean brush and a comb, um, Q-tips, extra toothbrushes, toothpaste. Like you could forget your entire um, night bag, overnight bag, come to my home and be able to shower, shave, brush your teeth, dry your hair, and put on makeup. Because I don't need people to prove themselves to me through their appearance. I just want to provide everything that makes them feel comfortable for theirs. So if your bathroom is really um, bare bones, like they'd have to scrounge for a Q-tip if they needed to get, or like floss, um, you really want people to prove through their appearance whether or not they're worthy of you. So now I'm gonna go to your bathroom. If you have to, if you're, if everything in your bathroom is left out, it's because there is part of you that believes no matter how much time, energy, and effort I put into myself, it's still not good enough. So I need to keep my hairbrush out, my blow dryer out, my flat iron out, my makeup out. I need to keep it easily accessible so that I can add to, redo, and change my appearance and the way people perceive me quickly and easily. Versus if when you get done in the morning, everything has a place and when you're done, everything is in place. You've put everything away. Even if that just means you wind your blow dryer cord and shove it in a drawer. It has a place and it ends up there. That is, I'm good with what I've done. Okay. What if those spaces and places are very organized? Not like it, you're taking this to a place of crazy and if your toothbrush is in the wrong spot, you have a meltdown. That's not what I'm talking about. But there is a place for your toothbrush and there is a place for your toothpaste not by your hairbrush. And um, there's a spot for your blow dryer. And when you put your blow dryer away, you wind the cord up so that it will last more than six months before it looks like an old telephone cord instead of a flat iron cord. Um, do you have a place to put your makeup away? How clean is your makeup drawer? Or is that bronzer that you dropped and it broke and scattered on everything in your drawer, is that bronzer powder still there? or did you actually take the time to clean it out? So the more effort you put into keeping your grooming space clean, the better you are at investing in yourself, which is different than self-care. Um, self-care is hygiene in my mind. Like There's a bare minimum of requirement to just stay healthy, like brushing your teeth, washing your hair, <laughs> uh, how often you do that versus if you really believe that I am worth taking care of and I am in worth investing in myself, these are gonna be the women that have bath salts and they're organized. These are going to be the people that have um, 
the their shampoo and conditioner gets wiped off so it doesn't have like all the gooby stuff on the outside. Um, these women have nothing to prove to anyone. And I know that sounds counterintuitive because you're like, well, but if they have to go through all that time, energy, and effort, and they put all that extra effort into themselves, they are trying to prove something to other people. No, they take care of themselves because they've invested. They're investing the only resource that is truly limited, which is time. And they're taking that time and they're investing it in themselves. And that shows up in your bathroom. How easy is it for you to find all of the things you need so that you can get ready in the morning? How easy is it for you to locate and put together, put yourself together in the morning? Now, if you are not a makeup person and you're like, I don't, I don't do makeup, great. Do you have leftover makeup from five years ago that you're like, yeah, I wore that to my friend's wedding and I've just never thrown it away? Throw it away because you're keeping it there just in case you need to keep up appearances. So your front door is what tells people, I'm inviting people, resources, and money to me but the area in your home that you groom in. So maybe you are in an apartment with one bathroom and you get ready in your bedroom. What does that area look like? Is, you know, is there loose powdered makeup all over? How long has it been since you wiped off your makeup brushes? Are you using that you know, $3 sponge from a year ago? How well do you keep how, what, how good of a condition do you keep the things in that keep you in good condition? When was the last time you cleaned all the hair out of your brush? Um, look at those grooming areas because the level at which you take care of those, that they have a place to return to once you're done with those, tells you the level at which you invest in yourself or are willing to invest in yourself. Are you willing to take that five extra seconds to put something away in a different way? Or does it just get jumped in the drawer? Or does it get left out? It's just left on the counter. So I always have someone ask, well, I use a curling iron and I can't put it away because it's still hot. Okay, that's valid. Um, but there's also all sorts of things like inserts that you can get to put in a drawer that you put the barrel of the drawer down in and it prevents you from melting your brush. Or, once it cools down, do you then put it away? Or is it always sitting on your counter? Every once in a while I'll have someone, they're like, I have no drawers, I have, I have no storage space. Okay, but do you have a specific assigned place that when you put your toothbrush, not in a toothbrush holder because you don't have one, but you're like, this is my toothbrush spot. It is now considered put away. Do you have that? Because I fully recognize that not everyone has an elaborate uh, storage compartment in their bathroom, especially if you're in an apartment. Like at best, you have a place for toilet paper and towels, <laughs> and everything else is on your counter. But is that your excuse to just drop it and run, or does everything have a place and there's a place for everything? Does everything have a place? And is there a place for everything? Because your bathroom is another place where um, lack or scarcity mindset will show up. Because if we feel like we are not worth investing in, we will not invest in the things that we use to take care of ourselves. So you'll have like, if you do wear makeup, that makeup will be from like the dollar store and you won't have a face moisturizer versus the women who are trying to, um, they're, they're still exploring, they're still trying to discover and understand the skin they're in, so they've tried 900 different facial products, none of which have worked, but they haven't gotten rid of any of those. So you have a drawer full of face creams that you don't even use. Get rid of them. Is there a place for everything and is everything in its place? And if you look at everything, you're like, well, everything has a place, but I don't even know why I have that. Get rid of it because every physical thing you have is taking a part of your energy. 
So if you have clothes or face cream or curling irons or a 1989 crimper that you don't even trust to plug into the wall because it might blow the circuit, whatever, look at your grooming space because this tells you whether or not you feel like you are worth investing in, how much time you feel like you're worth investing in, um, versus self-care versus hygiene. And if you have other bathrooms in your house and you provide nothing for people to take care of themselves, um, it's because you want them to prove that they should be in your life and so you won't provide anything for them. It is also an indicator that you don't want guests. Uh, look at your home. If someone were to come spend the night at your house, is there space for them? If you have a guest room, is it in a welcoming state or it is like your storage room that you're going to put an air mattress on top of your food storage and be like, mm, don't move too quickly, you might fall off. <laughs> um, because your guest room or do you have a couch and it's a hide -a bed couch or you're like, we don't have a hide -a bed couch, it's just a couch. Do you have an extra pair of sheets, a pillowcase, and a blanket that someone could sleep on your couch with those things? If you are wanting new people, new resources, and more money to come to you, you have to create space in it both physically, emotionally, and mentally. And one of the easiest indicators to know where you're at in that process is to change things in your physical space. As you change things in your home, it changes things emotionally and, and mentally for you. So, and vice versa. When you start to change a mindset, you start to want to move, rearrange, let go of things in your home. So I'm gonna do a couple more weeks of this because it's just fun for me to teach. I don't know if it's even helping anyone, I just think it's fun. Um, so I'm gonna go over the kitchen and the bedroom but I will do that next week. So if this helped and you're catching this on a replay, um, put in the comments replay, what did you learn about your doorways and your bathrooms that inspired you to say, oh, I'm gonna alter that, or oh, I'm gonna upgrade that, or oh, I need to throw that away. Um, share that in the comments if you have a friend <laughs> that needs this because they are trying to bring new people, resources, or money to them. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Share this video with as many people as you want. If you're in the body mapping group, invite your friends to this group and help me help other women to really find and love who they are inside and out. And I love you ladies. Talk to you next week.